Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the beautiful Merida, Merida, Mexico. This is such a good spot for day trips, and today we're gonna go check out three cenotes because we're leaving the peninsula soon and there won't be any cenotes. Yeah, this place is supposed to be good. It's supposed to, like kind of untraveled place. Uh, more Mexican tourists go here. Felicia has looped me up with sunscreen. We are ready to <laughs> We are ready to go. We're going to Kuzama today, and we're about to see four cenotes and there's a railroad track that's going to take us there. The first cenote today is called Eshtel Hill. Oh, that's steep. Who's going to go first? The cenote is called Eshtohil, and Tol is the name of a bird that builds nests here. So cenotes, I don't know if we ever explained this, but they're, an, uh, they're fed by an underground river system. So all cenotes around here are connected by a river underground. And it's just like a private pool for us for the day. He says that we can climb up wherever we want, basically. There's some bats in here too. It's just really cool. I would think that it would be like a cool place in here, like very cool, but it's like really hot. <laughs> it's like a sauna. Like when they go over the tracks, because each track is like laid, intertwining the next track, when they see that one of the tracks is a little bit higher, I think the drivers lean to the right or lean to the left so they, I mean, so the track, so the car doesn't fall off. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> I'm learning so much today, guys. So this is apparently an alamo tree. I don't know if it translates to the same in English, but it's very important and very symbolic for the Mayan, especially because of the roots. Like the roots even penetrate rock, he said, in search of water. So a lot of the cenotes here have tree, either the bark or the actual roots themselves. We're just casually going caving. We're crossing a bridge. It's pretty dark, but on the other side is a part of a cenote. This cave has like three cenotes. There are thousands of cenotes in this part of Mexico, and I'm really glad we stumbled upon these because they're, they're definitely off the beaten path and relatively new. Apparently they just opened a year ago. And I know Wes is really excited about the horse and buggy, but I'm just glad to be here with a local guide and learning about their importance because I think this is pr probably the most memorable day we've had so far. Okay, so we climbed down, like another, all the cenotes is like in the ground, we climbed down, and this one is like 45 meters, 45 deep. meters deep. The water is super clear, a little bit dark, so you can't see. Well, you can see a little bit. And they have a, they have a rope swing. So, Fel, are you gonna do it? Are you gonna do the rope swing? I'm gonna film you do it. See, but then you're gonna do it. Maybe. Uno, dos, tres. I'm gonna fail at the rope swing. How do you, how do, you do it? How do you... My heart is literally pounding. Oh, okay, you pull a little higher. Grab. I have to grab there. Can you grab above it? Maybe. And then pull up. No, but I'm gonna. Hey, you've done a rope swing before. I don't know if I have. Okay, fall. No. You gotta. I, can I just jump in? No. Let's count it down. No, no, no. Uno. No. 
Dos, dos, tres. Let go. I'm still shaking. I don't know why. I must practice rope swing techniques. <laughs> I don't even know where to start, but this was such a nice experience. The guys working here, they do everything they can to share information with you. It's all in Spanish, but really, like, really good people here. They were sharing stories about how this is a co-op and the land has been divided and they're doing what they can to not sell the land and they're running these sort of eco tours independently on their own and it was just such a good day. I'll write more about it on, on the blog, but it was so fun. Hopefully we, we shared that with you. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> So we're just going into this place. It's called a cantina. In Mexico, a cantina means, I don't know what a cantina means, but what's cool part about it is it's, it's called La Negrita, and it has these doors, like, you know, like the Wild Wild West, so they have those like flapping doors. This place is like that, and you, I guess you pretty much drink beer and get like snacks brought to you the whole time. As long as you're drinking beer, you get snacks. So this place is super cool. So like almost 45 minutes for a oh, table. Oh, more than that, no? It's packed. Even if we got a table, we'd still have to wait for our food and it's too loud to talk, but there's lots of stuff going on in the square, so we're still gonna show you guys a cool spot in Merida. Wes is getting a little hangry. <laughs> I'm trying to talk him out of going to McDonald's. I am. Um, we gotta eat. I wanna get some pozole. <laughs> So at the cenote, it's like a family business. And we were sitting there waiting for a Colectivo to take us back. And like cars would drive by and they were flagging them down like cenote, cenote, and a little kid had a flag. And then what it was so what it was so cool because when a car they actually sold someone, like a car came in, like they got a car to come in and come to the cenote. Everyone in the family, like around the whole thing is like it's like you could see their faces cheer, but everyone's like, let's go, let's go, let's go. Like it was like it was magical how excited they got. And like now, because of all this, Felicia is going crazy. <laughs> She's going crazy. She wants to buy, well, because we had a horse. You know the horse that we were carrying, or the, that was carrying us? Such a good horse. Very good horse. Palom, Palomero? Palomaro? Palomo. Palomo. And so Felicia wants to send him some carrots. So we're going to put some carrots or something into the Colectivo and get him to drop it off for the horse. <laughs> That's Felicia. She just loves these animals. I just feel bad because like I normally wouldn't ever ride a horse and carriage and I I don't know I I saw the animals and there's a different level of care here for uh, animals in Mexico which we've seen but I wanted to do something like it's really really nice to see like this is supporting local like it's different than the tour companies and just talking to the, the people there they really want you to have a good experience. They share the stories, not because they want more of a tip. They share it because they want to, you to know about their culture and about their land. And it just really moved us. It was, it was, it was a good day. How do, you, how do you feel now, Fel, that you uh, you fed a horse for a day? Well, we'll never know if it actually gets there, but we shipped it off in a colectivo, and hopefully we'll be able to go back, and we'll write about our experience because I would definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching, guys. 
funny story actually, we were going to the cenotes and that actually wasn't even the right cenote we were supposed to go to. We wanted to go to the cenotes of Kuzama that we had read about online, but we had actually got off on the wrong stop like in, the, in the Colectivo. The guy's like, cenotes, and we're like, hmm, yeah. I guess this must be it. <laughs> but it was still a great time. Like, it was such a good day. We wrote all about it on the blog. If you want to go to the one we went to or the other one that we wanted to go to. <laughs> Stupid tourists. But really a memorable day. Yeah, it was really great. Okay guys, uh, thank you again and uh, check out the blog. We started weekly uh, tutorials on video filmmaking and editing. So weekly of that. <laughs> <laughs> and subscribe if you want to continue on with this series because we're leaving the Yucatan Peninsula and heading to the Pacific next. Adios amigos! Bye guys! I'm going to be a singer too. Adios amigos! No, just kidding. Bye. <laughs>